Another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left-hand corner, we have DeWalt starting as the mustard yellow Zerg. Upper right-hand corner, we have Zeke starting as the white Zerg. This is going to be on Largo. And this is from the B-Cell Season 13 announcement show match tournament, which is... I mean, part of it, I'm excited to do these games. I'm glad I got these replays all together. These players honestly look like professional players from not that long ago in the Korean scene, in my opinion. They're not... And I'm not saying that they are at the Korean level right now, but just their level of play. And the gap is getting smaller. I feel like that's what's kind of happened over time. This is like previously you had it where the foreigners were just so far behind the Koreans, where it really was honestly, a, as far as a comparable watch, just wasn't as entertaining. Now, even play, the Choba League games, I think are very entertaining. And it's kind of like, the, and the way I look at it is, is it's like, how long ago when I was looking at this, does this look comparable to what was going on in the Korean scene? And that gap used to be huge. It's like, yeah, this looks like the Koreans from from 30 years ago, even though the game's not even that old. Or it's like not even comparable to the level of play. In, but it feels like that this, I don't know, this feels like four years ago, maybe three years ago of professional. I don't know. Maybe that's too close. But point being, I feel like that gap's getting closer and closer. And regardless, I feel like this it makes for entertaining games and this level of play is just oh wow look at this so dewalt dewalt by the way one of the top players out there actually is holding short maybe hoping not to get that probe scouted it looks like he is going to walk up however and see that i think 11 pool but basically 12 pool going to harass this drone as it's making its way out to the natural expansion dewalt oftentimes is the top foreigner out there and if not he is always in contention for the top three so Zeke's going to have his hands full. Two drones pulling off the line to go ahead and try to interrupt this. As far as other things going around, it looks like we are seeing a forge opener for Zeke. Uh, as far as other things to mention out there, there are a couple other things I want to get done out in the world, I guess. Um, as far as content creation for people and whatnot. But a little bit delayed on some of those things, mostly because things have been busy around here. I'm hoping that will not interrupt the Tuesday-Thursday casting. But as far as other things, I don't know. I've just had... Uh, few more interruptions as far as things go. I love this. Getting the, get that quick announcement in before I continue. But I don't know. Hopefully I'll be able to get stuff out in the near future. Uh, probe. <laughs> Let me get back to the commentary itself. Probe doing some nice damage. You can just see the amount of harassment this and the amount of disruption this probe's done. In the interim cannon warping down. Honestly, I feel like this cannon, um, well, it's too late to cancel it. But actually, a second photon cannon just preventatively. Six Zerglings out there making their way across. DeWalt seeing them making their way and coming wants to make sure that second cannon is in time and is actually in place, Zeke in place to go ahead and drop that gateway. He's actually holding up for a bit. Um, or sorry, it was DeWalt planning the gateway. He didn't have the minerals to do so. Now he's blocking with that probe. That cannon should be sufficient to go ahead and deal with these initial zerglings. That probe has full shield to go back. Extractor being dropped around the, what was that? 250, three minute mark. Hatchery being grabbed in the five o'clock location. This is a huge map. By the way, Largo, all sorts of uh, all sorts of minerals on it. Gigantic map. I'm interested to see the level of play because really the the core thing, and I feel like it might favor Zerg overall. I mean, I, this is kind of faux pas, but I really want to kind of point out the uh, third base right here, where you've got just this ramp where it just feels like Hydralis bait, in my opinion, where Hydras can just sit there on the high ground, keep walking down and attacking it. So I'm almost wondering if it is going to be more favored for like the 970 Hydralisk style of play. Zeke thus far not showing any indications of going to lair. Comparatively, DeWalt does have that pylon down. He's waiting for that scouting information. The Zerglings have pushed this probe back. That probe wants to go ahead and find the third hatchery if it can. And I think as far as the timing goes, seeing a lack of lair at this stage, I think he's expecting more of a 973-ish style build looks like that probe has been taken out so now DeWalt in the dark might opt to go ahead and go for a gateway he's grabbing or sorry a stargate he's going to go ahead and grab his second assimilator which suggests he's thinking about going yeah stargate templar tech the overlord i don't like this so the overlord diving in to get information in the main so it's going to miss the stargate that's building at the natural expansion layer was upgrading in the interim so it looks like it is going to be three hatch hydra or sorry three hatch uh muta a bit on delay because I believe that layer upgrade was coming behind that third hatchery. Should go back and look at the timing of all this. Too distracted in my own head today. Um, although I don't know, I'm loving life right now, so I'm just going to let that one go. Weapons 1 being upgraded as well, so DeWalt really wants to be aggressive. 
Usually this is an indicator that we're looking for an aggressive Bisu-ish build. We're gonna see Dark Templar, you're gonna see um, Corsair, tr basically Protoss trying to take map control and punish with Dark Templar and Corsair. This Overlord's certainly going to sacrifice its life. Two Zealots snuck out on the field. How did they even manage to get out there? Underneath Ziki's defenses, a third, sorry, a fourth hatchery being built. There are four Zerglings to try to deal with that, but that's way too few Zerglings to engage this. And the Spire is some distance off, and it's going to be a while before the rest of those Zerglings can come around. So definitely, first of all, going to get all sorts of scouting information. So seeing that fourth hatchery, but very likely going to get drone kills as well, and certainly going to interrupt some mining time. Able to get up in there. The Zerglings trying to do what they can. Now the rest of the Zerglings that were on the front trying to regroup. Nice drone drill. So one Zealot down, but a decent amount of interruption that's happened in the meantime. The one nice thing from Zeke's level of play there, though, is he didn't didn't panic and overbuild Zerglings. However, the Corsair, now up in the air, well before that Spire. Again, I feel like it's because of that delayed layer, and I'm not sure what the games were happening there with Zeke. I think, yeah, going that third hatchery before layer here. And so an Overlord going to be taken out by DeWalt, putting Zeke in the red. Fourth hatchery up, the Spire's there. It looks like he is getting Carapace. Another, a fifth hatchery and a creep colony going in that bottom right-hand corner. The Zergling's trying to get back together. The second Corsair out, going to go ahead and take that Overlord near the main. And this is really slowing Zeke's economy down. Second time he's in the red in this, well, actually, never mind. He already had an Overlord to go ahead and cope with that. A couple Scourge out, but level one weapons just about finished. That's going to be four Corsair in the air and not too long. And in the meantime, just a handful of Zerglings to deal with the Zealot's level one weapons. Looks like we are seeing Zealot leg speed in the background rather than a push to Templar tech. So it is going to be that plus one weapons Zealot Corsair build uh, on the front. And I'm almost wondering if uh, DeWalt might want to actually pull probes off gas for this because you might be overproducing gas a little bit. Because um, if you're just going straight Zealot, I don't know. We'll see. Eight Zerglings on the front, five Zealots, which can overwhelm that attack force. Let's see what, there is a nice SimCity already for Zeke on his front door with the two cre creep colonies there, sunk colonies would say, two sunk colonies to the south and evolution chamber as well, and Scourge over absolutely everything. So DeWalt at this stage, honestly, I don't feel like he should dive into anything. He's got his Zealots, he can go, this is where Right now, Zeke doesn't have much of a threat that he can present. So, and this is kind of the stage of PV. I don't actually shifting off one Zealot to go check out additional locations. He's trying to hunt down those Zerglings, but I'm almost wondering if he could just move out of probe right now and go ahead and grab an additional base. Because otherwise, what Zeke's going to do is he's going to continue to macro up behind this and buy himself some time. Big Scourge fleet from Zeke, a couple Mutalisks as well, pushing in to go ahead and deal with this Zealot Corsair grouping. The Zealot's backing off, gonna engage, the Zerglings trying to force them to engage to take that free Mutalist damage overhead. The Corsairs are nowhere to be seen. Where are the Corsairs? They don't want to engage, perhaps, because of the rest of the, there are the Corsairs, finally, engaging now that the Scourge are not with that grouping. They need to be very, very careful because those Scourge could easily do pickoffs overhead. And I think this is the stage of the, the match where DeWalt might think this is, and this is, uh, I don't know, this is my inexperience with Protoss these days. I almost wonder if it's possible to take an additional base right here, or if that's just being too greedy or, or too much risk. But the, look how much Zeke is shelling up. He's going to go ahead and grab a fourth base in that bottom right-hand corner. Has a couple of Zerglings out as well. I don't know that DeWalt's really going to be able to, maybe if he just shoves straight through this, I don't know that he's going to be able to do as much damage as he wants to. Drones transferring to the bottom right-hand corner. And as I say that, he's moving in. Another grouping of Mutalists and Scourge pushing back the six, actually eight Corsair. And this is going to turn into a big air battle in not too long. A couple Scourge moving out. I think this is mostly for scouting information. A drone that was misrallied. Going to lose its life. That's the... That Scourge does land, but this is enough Corsair. Yeah, that DeWalt is basically saying, I'm going to seize air control. Now he has Templar Archives out. Do not see any Dark Templar being built or out on the field, he's still going uh, High Templar, but very, very, very heavily dedicating to seizing air control. Zeke moving to that bottom right corner, he's filling it as a result of the number of Corsair that are out there. 
He's filling in with a lot of Hydralisk, but Zeke continuing to just macro up. He's got that fourth hatchery up in that bottom right corner. He's got a decent sized air fleet himself. He does have that level one carapace to help combat that level one weapons. So the Corsair aren't simply going to completely overrun the Mutalisk potentially, depending on uh, micro here and there. But there is a, I mean, this is a sufficient enough attack force that could push them back. The one advantage of these Corsairs is oftentimes it can help protect those High Templar, which is exactly what's happening right now. Ooh, Scythe Storm actually landing on the Corsair themselves there. DeWalt moving into that natural expansion now. Big SimCity. That's a lot of Zealots, though. So DeWalt pushing through. The Corsair is going to take out some Overlords overhead. There are High Templar. Great Scythe Storm! Catching! That is the best Scythe Storm I think I've seen all season. Catching a ton of drones plus Hydralisks. Now the Mutalisks grouping in, but Zeke's natural expansion looks like it's going to get completely obliterated. I don't see... There are some Hydralisks up on the high ground. Zeke also in the red because of the Corsairs. And DeWalt obliterating everything here. Just and morphing an Archon underneath. And that Psystorm. Oh, man. What a monstrous play right there. I think he can get the Hydralisk in, which still doesn't have Lurkers. Lurkers uh, very late in this grouping. Now, now the... Mutalisks fleeing from the Corsairs overhead. Some Hydals trying to regroup, but some Speed Zealots with that plus one weapon and plus one armor going to dive on top of them. Maybe has them pinned into a corner. It looks like they're actually... I think that's enough Hydals to go ahead and deal with this, but that natural expansion is going to be taken down. DeWalt expanding behind all of this on top of everything else. And Zeke just bleeding economy, bleeding units in the meantime. And there is GG from Zeke. What a great play from DeWalt. Wow. That Psy Storm. I want to go back and see if I can find the moment that Psy Storm landed because that is the most brutal Psy Storm I have seen in quite some time. And I like, actually, I like what DeWalt did because so much of, I'm going to pause a second because I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> sneeze commentary. So much uh, of the difficulty of Protoss these days is protecting your High Templar. Uh, and But just going in, thank you, in chat, giving me the blesses. Uh, but having a large Corsair fleet really mitigated the ability of Zeke's Mutalis to go in and dive on top of those High Templar. But go ahead and scoot through. A lot of Zealots. Pressing forward. Huge supply lead. And this is really where Zeke needed Lurkers, and Lurker Aspect was behind. But let's see if we can find it. Looking for that size storm. But, so you got the Hydralis grouped back here in the corner, and look at this size Storm. Look at that size Storm. How many kills were on that High Templar with that one storm? 14 kills with one storm. Sheesh. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Game 1, going to DeWalt. Thanks for listening.